Is the Yeezy Desert boot just a shoe that looks like a boot or is it actually a boot? Today we're gonna to find out the truth of what you're spending your hard earned money on when it comes to these boots. Because we just learned you can't trust sneakerhead hype and you especially can't trust these big shoe brands. And this video is brought to you by Rose Anvil because we just released a new wallet. It's called the Slim Wallet. And I love this wallet. We're also gonna make a few wallets out of the scraps of this boot. So stick around to the end of the ad to find out how to win. But this is basically just a two pocket wallet that was modeled after our SBB wallet and the Claude wallet, where you've got two pockets, one front pocket for your most used card, and then a side bigger pocket where the edge is rolled to accommodate more cards for all those cards you never use. You can technically put cash in this wallet, but it's not really made for cash, so it's mostly a card wallet, but you could, you could still definitely stuff some cash in there if you wanted. So for sticking to the end of the self promoting advertisement. Here's how to enter to win a Yeezy version of this wallet. And for a $10 discount off this wallet, use the code ROSEANVIL at checkout and get yourself a slim wallet. Now to the desert boot. So let's address some of the questions that I asked you guys about this boot in the previous Yeezy video and try to answer some of those questions you guys have. And to really determine if this is a boot or a sneaker, we're gonna put it on a scale from sneaker to boot. So it'll go sneaker, snoot, bootish to boot to rank each of these questions. And so for the first question, how breathable is it? Well, we bought a fog machine to direct some fog into this shoe. So we first tested it on a regular work boot that's a little bit more breathable. And some of the fog kind of came out as you can see. And then we tested it on a full leather work boot and none of the fog came out. So when we tested the Yeezys, we stuck the fog machine in there and it just came spilling out. It actually did not come out nearly as much out of these side panels but it came out a ton through the, the tongue. And the reason for that is this tongue is not gusseted anywhere except for at the very bottom where it's attached. So right off the bat, you've just got this huge issue of stuff being able to get inside of your boot. Any work boot out there is gonna be at least gusseted up to the third or fourth eyelet. So for breathability, we'll rank it as a snoot because as you can see with the Yeezy 350s, it came out a lot easier. So we're not quite putting it as sneaker. And that kind of leads us to the next question of, will sand get into this boot? Cause it is, it's called a desert boot, but I don't, I don't think it's actually made for the desert, but it's just kind of a funny question. So if you actually did step in sand in this thing, that sand's getting right into the inside of this boot. It is not preventing much of anything from getting in there. And it's not the intended use, but people are asking. But one interesting thing about that sand test, this mesh on the outside here, it's, a, it's called the spacer mesh or sandwich mesh. It's a three layered material with a top layer of this open mesh with a layer of interior microfilament that almost looks like a lattice structure on the inside with another mesh layer underneath, which is a pretty cool material and it might allow it to move and stretch and be a little bit more of a high tech material. But the problem is that sand got right into the middle of that thing and there's just sand caked all the way through it. And you couldn't really get it out. You couldn't shake it out. You have to just kind of scratch it out and let it kind of push itself out and for a very non-scientific test that was suggested in the comments people wanted to know how cactus proof this boot was being that it's a desert boot and cactus is growing deserts so we blew up a balloon inside of the boot and tried to pierce the side mesh all the way through to the balloon popping it but surprisingly it we couldn't get it to pierce through and it wouldn't pop and these are pretty heavy spines on this thing so at least it is cactus proof or cactus resistant so it really so it really seemed like a, a pretty terrible material to put on the outside of a boot unless you're using it just as a sneaker so for that reason that material specifically ranking it as a, a sneaker and out of curiosity and to just get some cool b-roll let's see how flame resistant this spacer mesh is so it just immediately melts and starts bubbling it like it's crazy because it's such an open structure there's really not a whole lot of material to it so it just kind of disappears so once again, most boots aren't gonna be around open flame, but there's a lot of people that work around open flame and this is far from boot material. So that's going to the sneaker end of the spectrum as well. The next question people kept asking was how waterproof is this boot? So since I don't know where my cup of water is, we'll use this H2O spray bottle. And if we pour this on the mesh, you can see that just goes right into the mesh, but the nice thing is this leather at least repels it to some degree. You know, leather's a little bit more water repellent than most materials. Let's see about the suede. So suede beads, beads it up pretty easily, 
but if it, if it sits on there for too long, it will absorb into it because of that open structure of, of suede compared to a new buck. And that's one of the bigger differences between this and some of the other sneakers that we've seen by Yeezy is it actually has some pretty decent leather. You'll notice that there's two different types of leather on this, this sneaker. There's the suede that goes around the toe and by the eyelets. And then there's this structure underneath that it looks like suede but it's, not, it's got a lot tighter nap on it. And that tighter nap leather is called Nubuck. And basically what Nubuck is, if you don't know compared to suede, is suede it comes from that split section of the leather where that higher quality grain structure at the top that gives leather its smooth texture is cut off and you're just left with the cheaper splits on the bottom. That's suede. But what Nubuck is, is they take that top better portion and instead of keeping it smooth, they, they basically sand it and buff it to give it a little bit more texture and a little bit more of a suede look. That's usually what you see in Timberlands. That's probably the most popular Nubuck boot out there. So it's a higher quality leather because it has that, that structure at the top that gives leather its strength. But let's see for sure if this is suede and if this is actually real Nubuck leather. So let's get these, these panels cut apart. And suede is really rarely used on work boots just because it doesn't have that grain structure to give it the tensile strength. And so it just rips a lot easier and it's not quite as durable. So if we peel this back, you can see that there's no grain structure on the backside, which would tell us that it was a rough out leather. So pretty cheap leather. But if we look at the new buck or the leather that looks like new buck, so it does have that fibrous pattern on the bottom telling us that it is an actual new buck. And another way to tell, which is a more visually stimulating test is by burning it. So if it's a synthetic material, it'll, it'll start curling up and start burning immediately. Whereas leather is a little bit more flame resistant and the little fibers burn first and then it starts maybe crawling just a little bit. So both, so both of these are real leather. So the suede will classify it as shoe. The new buck will, will classify it as boot ish because most heavy duty boots are not made out of new buck. It's more of the stylish boots like Timberlands, like we talked about. And as for the thicknesses of these leathers, so that new buck comes in at about 1.5 and the suede about 1.5 as well. So that's on the lighter duty work boot thickness and a little bit higher, a little bit thicker than most sneakers. So that one's, we'll say snoot, maybe we'll say bootish, bootish, bootish. And then to the next question of how puncture resistant is this outsole? So we put this boot on a scale and then put the put a nail in an arbor press to see how many pounds it actually takes to pierce through this. It actually surprised me. It took somewhere between 65 and 80 pounds to pierce all the way through there. And part of the reason is it's, it's not the softest rubber out there. It comes in on the durometer test in the high 70s, mid to, to high 70s, which is a lot closer to what we see in work boots like the Vibram lug sole that is probably one of the more popular work boots. That's right in that same area. So the compound of this rubber itself, it's about as hard as a work boot. So it's maybe not quite as puncture resistant as most boots. And I think there might be some cavities inside of this outsole. It's almost too squishy for how hard the rubber is. So for that reason, we'll rank it as boot-ish. And another material people were asking about was this heat welded rubber that goes along the outside. How hard is it to peel off? Will it, will it start separating once I start creasing these boots? And if I just do a little fingernail test and try to get this to separate, you can definitely get it to separate but it takes a lot of work. And a lot of times with these sidewalls, they're not heat welded because leather doesn't heat weld well to, to rubber because it doesn't have rubber properties to fuse them together. So a lot of times they'll cement these sidewalls on, on boots. It's not the, the most durable way to attach this sidewall. So for that reason, I would say it's more snoot than anything. And then the final thing I wanted to test was, are the, is this multi-zoned insole actually multi-zoned or is it just different colored? foam and does the foam, does the foam go all the way through? Well, we cut it in half. And as you can see, it's mostly just colored foam. It might, it feels like it might be a little bit more of a denser foam, but it's only a fraction of a millimeter thick. So it's, there's really nothing to this. It's just a, a cheap ortho light. That's the preliminary information, but the most interesting stuff is the insides. So let's cut this thing in half and see what's on the inside.
All right, we got it cut. And as for the actual cutting, how would I rank this? Probably Snoot. It was a little bit harder than a, a sneaker to cut, but it was a lot easier than most boots, especially the real boots. So let's see what's inside. So it's actually a fairly simple construction, but there is definitely some red flags in here. Like this internal counter cover. It is really nice that it, it has a leather counter cover on the inside because we've all seen how you wear through heels so fast in sneakers. So they use, like in boots, they use a leather counter cover to prevent that. But the problem is the, the, the counter cover isn't covering anything. It's just a separate layer and that lining stops where the, the counter cover begins. So all you have to do is have your heel wear through that one tiny little thread that sews those two pieces together. And now you've got a big gaping hole in your boot. It looks like it's a boot, but it's not really. So I would say it's boot-ish. And another question was, is there boost in this boot? There is no boost, but it is a nice soft foam. And it, it feels a lot softer on the inside. So if we do a durometer test of the inside of the foam, it's right around 20 short A. So it's a lot softer than what we tested on the outside. So for 20, that's a lot closer to sneaker. So we'll call that snoot. And another strange foam is this, this memory foam that lines above your ankle. It stops so abruptly, abruptly. And that's probably why it feels so weird and wonky when you first put it in, put your foot in the boot because there's, it doesn't contour, it's just square cut and it's right in the middle of the counter cover and it's a, it's like sits right across my ankle bone. I'm not sure why they didn't cut that down at an angle to give you that support up high, but have it slowly taper so it doesn't bother your ankle. And another huge red flag is this sole would be a lot more durable and a lot more boot-ish if this was solid all the way through, but you can see it's cored out all the way through the entire outsole. And so really the outsole is only two millimeters thick. So once you've worn through that two millimeters at any point in this boot, especially at the hill where everyone wears their boots out, you're gonna have a void in there that's gonna absorb water or sand or whatever it happens to be inside of your boot. But there is a few good things. So first one is the shank. So this is a boot, a very boot feature because it's a composite shank that is a pretty decent length and it is fairly sturdy. Let's see if, it, if I can actually break it. We'll see how how good of a shank it actually is. So it doesn't shatter. So it is a, a decent shank material. And, and the nice thing is it is composite, so you're not gonna set off any uh, metal detectors, and it's gonna give you a little bit of support. It's not nearly as supportive as a real shank. It is a, it's a, so it is a shank for a boot-ish boot. So boot-ish. And, and actually that might be the only really positive thing about this boot, now that I'm looking at it. And, but now, now that we've got it cut open, you can see how poorly constructed and designed this tongue is. I bet I could even just rip this tongue off. Maybe not. Okay, maybe not. Smoke too soon. Okay, so it's sewn on there well. But you can see that it's just a single stitch line that holds that tongue on. It's not gusseted up like you see in most work boots. It does have this elastic that holds the tongue in its place, which is a, a nice feature for the style of the boot. So overall, if we tally up the scores, here's the results. So is this, is this a boot? Not really. When you compare it to a real boot, it's a lot more like a sneaker than it is a boot, except for how it looks and how tall it is. So what do I think of the boot? Well, the thing about the 700s that made it work for me was the fact that it was an obvious play on the ironic dad shoe style. And someone in the comments section put it perfectly as a meta dad shoe. But these desert boots, on the other hand, they just look like one of the other hundreds of military desert boots you can already buy. Maybe that's part of why these didn't really get as much notoriety and they're not as popular as some of the other Yeezys. And I think it ultimately comes down to the fact that they're not ironic enough to be iconic. And so that makes them not iconic enough to be ironic. And that's a lot of what all the Yeezys seem to be about, at least the ones that we've cut apart. And it just, to me, it seems like Kanye liked the desert boot style. And instead of doing a new spin on it, he just made one and put the Yeezy name on it. And that's about as far as the thought process went. Ultimately, they're just sneakers disguised as a boot and they're they're made specifically for casual wear and strictly for style they're not a really a boot in a utility sense in any way and i don't think anyone expected that but at least now we know so if Con kanye if you're looking for a consultant to make a real boot let me know so is it worth the price well based on the materials and the quality and the construction it seems like it's a little bit overpriced maybe not as much as some of the other yeezys but i still think you're definitely paying for the yeezy name and next we're chopping up the 450s. So let me know in this video's comments what you want me to dissect, what you want me to test, how you want me to, to do this video, because this was really fun taking your guys' input. 
stabbing stuff with cactuses and doing some of the other tests. So let me know. And thanks for watching. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. And don't forget about the slim wallets that we just released. And thank you guys. See ya.